In this video, I guide you through installing and configuring Trunas on your server. Trunas is a powerful open source storage solution that's been making waves in the world of data management. Whether you're a home user looking to centralize your media or a business in need of robust storage and data protection, Trunas has you covered. The first step is to install Trunas. Here we're installing Trunas Scale because it has many new features like new plugins and full KVM virtual machines. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Here I already created a bootable USB with Trunas ISO and I already booted into the ISO. So we're gonna go through the setup really quickly. It's very simple, there's nothing complicated. So first thing we're going to do is click on install and upgrade. So as you can see here, I have one NVMe drive and I have eight four terabyte drives. So we want to install the system of course on the NVMe. So use spacebar to select the NVMe and then you can just hit tab and then okay. So this is a warning telling you that all the data on this drive is going to be erased and Trunas is going to be installed. So just make sure that no data is on this drive and then we can click on yes. Let's set up an administrator user. All right, let's set up the password. Is asking if, if you want to create a swap partition. I rec really recommend this. This is part of Linux OS and how Linux works. So let's create a swap. Create swap. Now it's doing all the partitions and soon it's going to extract and install the system. We just need to sit tight and wait. Okay, and as you can see here, TrueNAS is successfully installed. So it's asking us to reboot and remove our installation media. So that's exactly what we're, what we're going to do now. I'm going to reboot the system now. Okay, so TrueNAS is booting up. We just hit enter or you can just wait a couple of seconds. It's going to go and do all the checkups and everything. Usually the first time you boot the system is a little bit slower because it's initializing everything. But once everything is up and running, we should be able to connect on the web UI. Here, it should automatically get a DHCP IP address from my network, and then that's what we're going to use to connect via the web browser. Okay, so it finished booting up, and as we can see, it's telling us to go to the this web address, which is the IP that it took from my network. So we're gonna jump on the web UI, and we're going to configure TrueNAS. We're gonna create pools, we're gonna create data sets, we're gonna create Samba shares, so let's do this. Okay, so we're here in the computer now, and we're going to go to the address so that we can access the web UI of TrueNAS. As we saw previously, the IP is 182.168.0.181, and I just wanna add HTTPS. Okay, so you're going to receive a warning like this. It's just that we haven't set up any SSL certificate. So we're just going to click on advance and proceed. And we have our login screen. So we're going to use the user admin previously created and our passport. And as you can see, we are logged in into our true NAS server. So the first thing we want to do is we want to configure your storage. So we're going to go to storage. And as you can see, we have no pools. So we're going to create a pool create pool. So here we see our eight four terabyte drives, and we're going to select only the four terabyte drives. Perfect. We're going to add it to the data VDEV. The VDEV configuration that we're going to go for this server, since it has eight four terabyte drives, is going to be a single VDEV of RAID Z2. This will give you a redundancy up to two drives failing at the same time. In my opinion, between eight and 10 drives is best to keep it in one VDEV and always go for RAID Z2 for two drive redundancy. If you have less than eight, maybe you have five or four or something like that, I recommend you go for RAID Z1, which will give you one drive for redundancy. But we have eight, so we're going to do RAID Z2. They recommended automatically RAID Z2, perfect. And for the name, I'm going to put something simple like storage. Everything looks good, so let's click on create. Here, it's giving us a total estimated raw data capacity of 21 terabytes, which is pretty good for this server. So let's hit create. Little warning just to make sure that your, your data drives are empty because this will erase everything on your drives. So click confirm and create pool. One of the advantages of using ZFS is that the creation of the RAID is very quickly. It takes a couple of minutes just to set up the RAID. If you compare this to a traditional RAID or software RAID on Linux, it takes hours and it could almost take an entire day depending on how big your drives are. But as you can see, couple of minutes and now our RAID Z2 is up and running. 
So let's go ahead and check out our data sets. By default, it creates a root data set, which is your storage. But as you know, with ZFS, we need to create a secondary data set that it's going to be our Samba share. OK, so we're going to click on add data set. And here we can name it anything we want. In this case, I'm just going to put Windows share. Here, all the default settings are pretty good. The only option that we're going to change here is the share type. We're going to change this from generic to SMB. And honestly, the defaults are pretty good. Um, there are more advanced options, but the defaults are going to work for you. OK, so let's click on save. So our Windows share data set is created. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a user. This is the user that you're going to use to log in into your Samba share. There's also options to allow guests. This way, you don't need authentication. But I like to keep my data sets and my Windows shares more secure with a username and password. So let's go here on credentials. Let's, let's go to add local user. And we're going to click on add. Here, I'm just going to put my name. It's going to automatically generate a username for me and just a password. OK, confirm the password. For the email, you can add an email if you want. It's not really necessary. And all the defaults here are also good. We can click on Save now. OK, so now we have our user. So now we need to configure the permissions on the data set. So we're going to go back to data sets. We're going to click on our Windows Share data set. And we're going to click here on Edit Permissions. OK, here the only thing we need to do is we need to add an item of type user. And we're going to look for our user that we just created. Perfect. And we're going to click on full control. So we're giving we're giving full control to this user. Oh, it looks like. It's changed. OK, that looks more like it. We're giving full control of the Samba share to this user. Now we just click on Save Access Control List. OK, so our permissions are set. Now it's time to create the Samba share. So for that, we're going to go on shares. We're going to click on add. We're going to look for our Windows share data set. And here the defaults are pretty good. There's not much to change. You can click on advanced here. If you want to allow guest access, this is accessing your Samba share without any username and password. You can access it from here and all the other options are pretty good by default. So we can click on Save. OK, so in my case, the service was already started because I was doing some testing before. But for you, it might ask you if you want to enable the service. For this, you're going to want to enable the service and then click on Start Service. Me, I'm just going to click on Restart Service. OK, so the SMB service has been restarted and our share is up and running. So now let's test our share. Right now, I'm using uh, my Mac. It's it's Mac OS. And to access the Samba share via Mac OS, we need to click on the Finder. And then here, if you go at the top, you're going to see this, this Go button. So you click on Go, you click on Connect to Server. And here we're going to type the IP of our server, which is 181. We're going to click on Connect. It's going to give us this little warning that you're attempting to connect. You click on continue. And then it's going to ask you for your username and password. In this case, we're going to use the username and password that we previously created. And as you can see, we have our Windows share right here. We're able to create new folder. Yes, so we have write permissions. We're able to rename the folder. So we have modified permissions and we can delete the folder because we also have permissions for that. OK, so now if you wanted to set up this on Windows, let me bring up my Windows uh, VM so that we can set up your Samba share on Windows too. Setting this up on Windows, you would have to click on your Explorer. You go on your Explorer tab here. You type backslash backslash and then you type the IP of your Windows share. And as you can see, it's asking me for username and password. So we're going to use the same. Here, 
here we have our Windows Share data set. And same thing as before, we create a folder, we rename a folder, and we can delete a folder. So if you want to set up this as a network drive on your Windows machine, all you need to do is copy the path, go back to this PC and click on computer, and then you can click on map network drive. Here you can paste the path to your Windows share and you can select a letter. In this case, we're gonna choose Y and then we can click on finish. As you can see, now we have another network drive on our machine. Uh, we can see here the network drive is right here. It's, so that's how you set up a network drive on Windows. So just as a quick overview before we're done with this video, I just wanted to show you what system I'm running. I'm running a Core i7-5930K CPU. It's a six core, 12 thread CPU. I have 125, in this case, 128 gigs of ECC RAM. And the network is an Intel one gig connection to my network. Uh, the version of TrueNAS scale that I'm running is version 22.12.3.3. All right, guys, so we're done with this video. We installed TrueNAS, we configured your RAID C2, we configured your new data set, and we configured your Samba share. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.